I'm going to show you now how to change percents into fractions. And this is really pretty easy. You just have to remember that percent means hundredth. So a percent is a fraction with a denominator of a hundred. So 17% could just be written as 17 hundredths. And that's it. We've changed our percentage into a fraction. But these two things mean the same thing. 17% means the same thing as 17 hundredths. So 12% would be 12 hundredths. And when a fraction can be reduced, when it can be simplified, it should be. So I notice that both of these, the 12 and the 100 here, are both even numbers. So I'll divide them both by 2 and I get 6 over 50. So the fraction's been reduced. And I can reduce this again. 6 and 50 are both even numbers, so I can reduce that to 3 over 25. And 3 doesn't go into 25, so that's reduced to simplest form now. But 12% is the same thing as any of these fractions. Those are all mathematically equivalent. And 75% would be 75 one hundredths. And you can probably tell that that's the same thing as 3 fourths. If we have percentages that are greater than 100, we can still change them to fractions. They just end up being um, improper fractions or mixed numbers. Watch this. 120%, well, remember that percent means hundredth, so 120% is 120 over 100, and that can be reduced. I'm just going to get rid of the zero there, and I can immediately reduce this to 12 over 10, and that can reduce further to 6 over 5. So I can write it like that, as an improper fraction, or I could write it like this, 1 and 1 fifth, that would be the same, or I could write it like this, 1.2. All of these things are mathematically equivalent. And if you're given a percentage like this, you might be asked to change it into a particular form, like you might be told to write it as an improper fraction, or as a mixed number, or as a decimal. But notice that in all cases, because it's a percentage that's greater than 100, it comes out to a number that is larger than 1. All right, let's do the next one, 210%. 210% is 210 hundredths. So let's reduce the fraction again. That's equivalent to 21 over 10. And I could write that as 2 and 1 tenth or I could write that as 2.1. So again, we could write it as an improper fraction, or as a mixed number, or as a decimal number. All of those are, in fact, the same number, just written a different way. And this is how it's written as a percentage. There are certain fractions that just show up a lot in the real world. Like 1 tenth is very common because we have a base 10 number system. And 1 half and 1 fourth are pretty common just because it's pretty easy to divide something into halves or fourths. And these, these fractions show up so commonly that you should know their equivalent percentages. And you should memorize these if, they don't, if you don't already know these. And, and if it's not obvious to you, you should memorize these. You should know that one-tenth is equivalent to 10%. If you didn't know that before, memorize that fact right now and understand it. One-tenth of something is the same as 10 one-hundredths, or 10%. One-fourth of something is the same as 25%. So if you're driving to your grandmother's house and you're 25% of the way there, that's the same thing as being one-fourth of the way there. One-third is equivalent to 33 and one-third percent, or about, about 33.3%. It would really be exactly 33.3 .3 repeating. 33.33333, the digits go on forever. But it's approximately 33.3%. That's one third. One half is 50%. 50% 50 of something is half of something. And I'll scroll on down the list here. Two thirds is 66 and two thirds percent. or approximately 66.7%. And 3 fourths is exactly 75%. So those are some common fractions, and you should know the equivalent percentages for those fractions.